are about to watch a video series of a trip that I did and it was awesome. I really tested some of my limits and put myself through some crazy challenges and I'm quite proud of myself. It was an amazing, amazing trip. I saw a lot of things, I did a lot of things and um, been to places that a lot of people don't get to. So I hope you enjoy the videos. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and I did it all on broken shoes. <laughs> Well, it is Wednesday, May 17th, and I am here at the Moose Hunt. I can never remember the name of this hotel. It's terrible. It's really hard. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, anyways, it's in Elk Lake. I'm about an hour from the Gamble Lake Access, which is where I planned on sleeping. Um, but then I was driving here, and I was really sleepy. And then the weather said it was going to be minus five tonight, which is fine. I mean, I winter camp, but it's a six day trip and tomorrow is going to be really, really rough. It might be like the toughest day I ever had <laughs> backcountry camping. I thought, you know what? If there's a motel along the way that's not too far from the access and it's not crazy expensive. I'm going to stay. 80 bucks for the room. It's super nice. I'll put some pictures in here that I took earlier. Um, there's the bunk beds and a big bed and fridge, microwave, coffee maker, TV. There's bathroom with a full tub. I just had a bath. It was so nice. And uh, it's 9.30. I'm going to go to bed. And I look pretty. I just got out of the tub. So good night. See you tomorrow. Well, good morning. It is a beautiful day for a canoe trip. Um, it's Thursday May 18th. I am here at the Gamba Lake Access. Uh, made it through no problem. There was some uh, concerns about possible flooding on the road. Uh, I was talking to Eric from Tomogamy Outfitters because they couldn't get any intel from anyone and um, that's that was his only concern about my route. So um, no problems getting in. Just a couple of spots where there's maybe four or five, six inches of water, but not too bad. I've seen it worse. I'm going to go through um, from Gamble to Sunny Water to Smooth Water and then down the Lady Evelyn River to um, Duff Lake. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do those two portages. That one is really crazy. Or uh, I might take the river all the way around and out um, to back to Gamble. So I'm going to be doing about 4,500 meters of portaging today. Hopefully I get them all done. If not, I'm just going to stop whenever I'm tired and pitch my tent. I'm trying not to overwhelm myself. Uh, it's the most portaging I've ever done in one day. It is my fourth trip of the season, but I've just been doing really simple trips. Um, so I'll just have to take my time and get through it as I do. Uh, hoping to make it to sunny water today. Uh, there's about 3,600 meters or so in portaging to get to the first little body of water. And then uh, I've got two more smaller portages to get to sunny water. Um, it's supposed to be one of the most beautiful lakes in Tomogamy, according to Happen Andrea Wilson. And uh, I've got a lot of uh, tips and tricks and information from Happen Andrea over the last few weeks. Thanks, guys, for the help. Um, and um, I'm just going to go give her and see what happens. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, I am on the water. All right, so I'm just uh, going around this point here. And then I will be at the portage. Here's the campsite right here uh, on Gamble, the one that's not at the access. Uh, looks pretty closed in and sheltered. Might not be great for bug season, but it would be good for um, rainy, a rainy weekend or a windy weekend or somewhere where you might need some shelter. Um, but it looks like it's open on the other side as well. I was worried about the currents here. I was worried about the water level and um, everything seems good. I'm just uh, now concerned that that means that I'm going to have a, a bit more of a tougher time going down the Lady Evelyn. Um, according to Hap's book, you can only do this trip uh, within three or four weeks. I think it was even two to three weeks, maybe, of the ice going out. Um, because after that, the Lady Evelyn is too shallow and uh, it's going to be a slog fest. So that might be the case. But uh, once I get through these portages today, I'm not going back. 
right, it is 9.20. I believe I have spotted the start of the portages and it actually doesn't look like this here. I know the last, uh, Hops book says the last 600 meters is pretty steep and bouldery. I'm picturing something like um, Fat Man's Falls or Bridal Vale, um, but after doing four kilometers of portages, um, I'm not sure how I'll be able to handle that, but I'm just going to take it as I go. If I make it two kilometers, three kilometers today, if I make it all the way, great. If I don't, I'm just going to stop whenever I get tired. Hopefully I make it. <laughs> Big wind gusts coming through. Totally irrelevant to me. The FOT map says there's a 300 meter and then I have a bit of paddling and then I start the 2600 meter. Uh, Haps map says it's a 36-ish hundred meter uh, all in one go. So we'll see how that works out. All right, it's 25 after nine. Uh, got the canoe pulled up here. I'm gonna take the pack first and just see what the situation is. Um, I'll walk to approximately 500 meters just to see if I actually have to stop and I'm gonna do this piggybacking um, if it is the whole stint all at once just a small correction it's the Jeff's map that's on my phone not the FOT map um, they all have different measurements um, the Jeff's map says there's a 300 meter and then I got a bit of paddling and then I have a 2k and then there's two smaller ones to get to sunny water Hab's map says that I'll show I'll insert it here but um, 3,600 meters of portaging and then the two small ones, so smaller, they're not small, I think one's, I don't know, I have to look, it doesn't matter, I'm procrastinating, goodbye. I have chosen to wear my Queen Newports today, these are one of my older tripping sandals, uh, usually with my dry suit I wear water shoes um, that I have from MEC. Uh, but I wanted to try and wear the Keens if I could um, because of all the portaging uh, for more traction and more comfort. Um, also, I did bring my water socks just in case there's a day where, you know, I'm doing a lot of paddling and I don't really need the dry suit. So far, I'm really happy with this portage. Um, I'm assuming that whoever goes through here uh, it's going all the way to sunny water. Um, Pat said that a lot of camps use this uh, trail and do this trip. So um, it is, I don't want to say well marked, but it's very easy to find the trail. And uh, that's something that is always uh, a big issue for me in Tomogamy. It's not just doing a 500 meter portage that's tough, it's finding the trail a lot of times um, because it's so overgrown or unmarked or whatever so at least if I know where I'm going that takes a lot of the anxiety away all right well I've walked about 300 ish meters and I see water in front of me now, I don't know if the trail goes uh, to the right or if I have to cross the water to be quiet in case there's a moose out here. My dry suit is so noisy though. <laughs> I don't think it would work. Okay, there's some trail tape. Uh, looks like I have to cross here. Oh, I see the sign. It's over there. I think I walk it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna reset up the, here, here's the trail right here. I'm not going to reset up everything, put everything in the boat and then take it out in like two minutes later. It's so much work. Get the size of that. Holy smokes. It's like as big as my foot. <laughs> oh. Okay, keep going. I like that there's a sign. That's good. Makes me feel great. So according to the Japs map, this is the water I'm supposed to be paddling through. <laughs> Oh, hilarious. And uh, yes, I am uh, technically on 
uh, the part past the 320 meter or whatever that's on the Jeff's map. I do have the FOT map printed out here as well, but it's uh, away right now. I'll check the map, make sure I'm here. Oh yeah, there's a trail marker. It's on the ground, but it's okay. Let's me know I'm in the right spot. Oh, I'm nice and shady. <laughs> I love the sun, don't get me wrong, but in this dry suit with the sun shining, it's just too hot. Um, wherever I decide to put my pack, I think I'll try to walk for 20 minutes, do a kilometer, and then go back and get the boat, and then piggyback like that. So when I take off my pack, I'll drop the top half of the dry suit down. I have to do it before I get too hot and sweaty, or um, I'll be too cold. All right, I have been walking for about 20 minutes. All right, it's exactly 20 minutes. <laughs> and um, I am where the 2K supposedly starts on the Jess map. Um, probably done almost a kilometer, if not a kilometer. I'm gonna put the pack down here. I'm also carrying two full bottles of water um, because I am in an uh, area where I didn't know if I could get water um, because of, you know, it's swampy or whatnot. Um, I just brought two full ones just to make sure I have enough for this 3,600 meters in portaging. It's a really nice trail. Uh, it's kind of windy and goes a little all over the place, but no issues at all. There's no boulder gardens. There's a couple of tree roots here and there, but super uh, easy so far. I'm sure the, the best is yet to come. Not even down a full kilometer. I'm already on my first Jolly Rancher. I had to get some chaps to get. I figured, meh. Nah. Okay, so here's the tree that's down. And uh, I'm just looking to see if there's a way around it. So I don't have to uh, clear all these branches. Um, I don't know. Because if I go this way, I've got to deal with getting over that. So I think I might just drop the canoe and slide it through. And then pick it up on the other side. I'll break some of these branches off just to make an opening. Um, I think they'll snap pretty easy. And uh, then I can just shoot through here. All right, that was really messy. <laughs> uh, these branches are really dry. And I wish I would have kept my sunglasses with me because, oh, I got all the stuff on my face and in my hair. But I cleared a nice little path, so that's good. All right, off we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> all these things take time. My hand smells amazing, though, and um, I'm just going to keep walking. All right, it has been 50 minutes since I left the boat and uh, just making my way back here. I'm just about back and uh, I'm gonna walk for 20 minutes with the canoe um, and then we'll see where I am from there. Just keep taking it section by section, breaking it down into small sections so it's not overwhelming because otherwise I'm gonna be like, oh. <sighs> glad I took the top of my dry suit off. It's amazing how fast you can go from, oh my God, my hands are freezing cold. Why didn't I bring gloves? To I'm sweating and I'm only wearing a tank top and a long sleeve, a very thin long sleeve. Okay, I'm back at the boat. Off we go. Round one. Oh boy, I'm out of shape. <laughs> my shoulders actually are just really sore. Um, I had to stop twice and try to readjust the canoe because my shoulders were just aching. <laughs> It's the first 1K I've done this year, I think, and uh, I've still got like three and a half more. Um, two and a half more. Don't go crazy. Uh, anyways, I have the canoe finally at the flagging tape here by the water. Um, I find it funny that there's tape right here 
but there's no tape on the other side. So I'm wondering if I can paddle a bit of this section. Probably not, but I'm curious. <laughs> well, <laughs> I saw all this water running alongside the portage and it was a tough little shallow part to get through, but then it was all open. And I thought maybe I can paddle beside the portage instead of doing it. Cause there's water on the map and it says low water. But uh, I thought even if I could do part of it in the water, I'd give it a try. So as I was trying to get through the shallow section, um, I looked over and there was a giant snake. I don't know where it went, but it's slithering through the grasses. Anyways, I'm gonna see if I can get through here or not. Probably not, and then I have to go all the way back, but I thought it was worth a shot. Well, I keep finding these little waterways to take, um, but supposedly I haven't gone very far. I came from way over there, but on the map, I've like moved like teeny tiny bit. Uh, the portage is in there. So I'm hoping to kind of meet it at the end or find it somehow but it's just getting to it i might have to go all the way back this might be a total waste of time but i figured why not give it a shot <laughs> i was so excited i'm like look there's water lots of water um but i had to get through this so i just jumped out of the canoe i am wearing a dry suit but man this water is cold um i'm just gonna pull it probably up over there and uh, I just looked on the map. I've barely moved at all. I should have maybe just taken the portage. <laughs> but this is an adventure and I love adventure. Um, I just had to heft the canoe through a bunch of really nasty stuff and I probably put a ridiculous amount of scratches on it. But I found some more water and uh, I think I've only gone maybe 250 meters by the looks of like the portage, maybe even less than that. But uh, I'm still going to keep going. Screw it. Might be a big disaster. Might have to go all the way back. But uh, the opening where I just was at, um, there's some flat spots and some spots where it looks like I can get out uh, to get into the portage somehow. So if this doesn't work out in front of me, I'll go back and get on it there and have to do almost the whole thing anyways. But this is fun. <laughs> it's about 11.30. All right, by the looks of it, I can't go any further. Um, the portage is over here somewhere. And um, I've maybe, maybe took about 500 meters off of it. <laughs> and I've been out here for ages. Had all kinds of uh, narrow, shallow places where I've had to lift the boat up because it was too wide to fit through. And beaver dams and all kinds of stuff. So. Um, it looks like there's a bit of an opening here where I can get in. I'm going to grab the backpack and uh, carry it that way and see if I can find the portage and uh, then I'll come back and get the boat. Well, by trying to avoid the portage, I've gotten myself in a bit of a conundrum. Um, I grabbed the pack and I bushwhacked through the forest. I walked and walked and walked. It was a slog and I finally found the portage. I'm maybe 500 meters past from the start. Like this wasn't worth it at all, but whatever. This is how we learn. Now the canoe is still out there. Um, so I walked down the portage a ways with the pack until I found somewhat of a more open way to go get the canoe and uh, now I've got to go do that. So it looks like this is some type of an animal path and uh, I'm hoping that I can find my way back through this way so I don't lose my pack and um, I can get the canoe through. What a shit show. Just take the portage next time. Just take the portage. I always think there's a shortcut. And well, this is all boggy and swampy and like sucky muck. So I'm sinking, my feet are getting stuck. And now I'm like, oh my God, my pack's back 
their whole canoe is a ways away. And this is all swamp. <sighs> stupid. That was really stupid. Oh well, there's nothing I can do. I just gotta suck it up and go fix what I did. Oh, there's nothing like leaving your canoe somewhere and then going back to find it and finding it. Oh my God. And it's actually not that far from where I just got off the, the trail. It's just a little you know, swampy. Kind of feels like I'm walking in snowshoes. It's like every step is like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Lesson learned. <laughs> And watch where you're going. Bye. Well, it's 10 after 12. And I have gotten the canoe and my pack and all my things together at the portage. I'm spent. I'm just spent. I should not have done that. I exerted so much energy unnecessarily. And it was really stupid. Um, I'm just going to sit here for a bit and take a rest and uh, I'll decide what to do from here. Well, <laughs> it's about 12.30 and um, <clears throat> I got in the water around 11. I'm surprised that was only an hour and a half because it feels like about three or four hours. <laughs> So now I'm finally here on the portage. Uh, by the looks of the GPS, I've completed about maybe a fourth of it, not quite. So I still have like one and a half K to do here. And then there's a 175 and I think a three something to get to sunny water. I don't know if I'm gonna make all of those. Um, I'm gonna take the canoe first. I've set it up for portaging. I'm sitting here having a prosciutto wrap. Thank God the bugs aren't bad yet. Um, there are barely any, just a couple little flies here and there and nothing's biting. Otherwise I'd be just screwed. That's my own stupidity. I, I'm so mad at myself for doing that. All right, it is quarter after one and I have just put the canoe down. I picked up the canoe. When I first started walking, my feet were <laughs> like walking this big steps, like just baby steps, blundering, uh, tripping, like I just couldn't get it right. And then uh, after I walked for a bit, I got my groove, but this last section, it's all boulder gardens and stuff, so. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a kilometer in that 20 minutes. It usually takes me about 20 minutes to do a kilometer, but I wasn't moving very fast. <laughs> oh, just walking around in the forest all day. And my shoes are really bothering me. Um, if it continues, I might just switch to my um, hiking boots. I just don't want to get them wet. They're my dry camp shoes, but whatever I need to do. I'm not sure what the situation is. I just wore the Newports last year for a trip and they were fine. I don't know if it's because of the dry suit. Uh, there's a lot of footy in the dry suit that goes in the shoe. And I'm wondering if that's what it is. It's just too much. Oh, I didn't go this way. I went that way. <laughs> All right, it took me 17 minutes to get back with nothing, so that leads me to believe I was going a little bit slow with the canoe, but that's okay. As I was walking, I stopped to take a good look at my shoe. And this is why it keeps falling off the back. 
the strap has come detached from my shoe. Uh, this is not good. It's working right now, but it looks like it could break at any minute. And if I'm walking somewhere with the canoe, let's say, and I don't have the pack and the shoe breaks, then I am going to be in trouble. So before I can continue, I am going to open up my pack. I'm going to take the dry suit off. I'd rather just put my hiking boots on. My feet are really uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, if they get wet, whatever. Uh, I'll put my socks on later and put a plastic bag on my feet and then put the boots on after and I can try to dry them by the fire or whatever if I do get them wet. I've got the dry suit in my dry bag now. Um, I'll just clip it to the back of the pack somewhere or I can carry it. It doesn't make a difference. I've got my camp shoes on, made them nice and tight. Uh, these are a bigger, looser shoe. They're my comfy shoes for camp, so hopefully um, they're okay. Uh, they'll definitely be better than what I was wearing. My feet have been slip sliding and falling out of this shoe since I started, and that's my own fault. Again, another mistake. I should have checked my shoes better, but I had both pairs there, and I'm like, oh, these ones are sturdier. I'll wear these, and didn't even look to see that the strap was like ripped off or maybe I ripped it off today I don't know I can't tell but anyways off we go again I'm gonna take the pack actually gave me a nice little rest uh, while I was doing this give me some more energy so um, off I go well it is uh, almost quarter after two I have made it to this beautiful waterfall here um, this isn't actually the creek crossing. There's another spot where that happened. Um, I'm getting really tired. It's really pretty here. Um, just looking around and wondering if maybe uh, I can camp here. I see the uh, trail up ahead is getting elevated and bouldery. Uh, I still have quite a ways to go on this portage. Um, it looks like uh, a good distance. Well, I put the canoe on my head, grabbed the food bag and decided to go. And shortly after uh, climbing up a little bit, I had to cross this creek. I don't have my water shoes on anymore. So I was a little bit nervous, so I actually laid the canoe across here and then pulled it over and then was on that rock and jumped over to that rock and then used the canoe to kind of steady myself. Um, so as soon as I got it over, I noticed this beautiful flat spot right here. And then the steep, long climb that's coming up. I don't think my legs can do it. My heart wants to go, my mind wants to go, but my legs are just tuckered out. So, I could put the tent here. The problem is I'm on a portage, um, but the chances of somebody coming through here today, probably really slim. Also, it's not like a super flat spot, but it would do. Uh, it's three o'clock. I think I might be done. I might have to just camp and block this portage a little bit. I don't. I don't know what else to do at this point. Um, I took the backpack. I came across. I brought, went and picked it up so I could bring it across the creek. And I kept walking. I walked all the way up there to where that tree's down, past that, and then it goes like this <laughs> and it's super steep and I was like I might be able to get up it with the pack but I don't know if I could do it again with the canoe and it's a long steep climb it's supposed to be like the last 600 meters of the portage is steep so there won't be any other options if I can't make it from there to the end so I'll just have to make it and um, I'm not sure I can well, it's quarter after three and I have now committed to staying on the portage. Um, I moved some sticks and stuff 
And I think I can get my tent over far enough so somebody can still walk around it. Um, I've got the canoe here. It's like a nice little nested spot for it off the trail. And uh, the first thing that I did was set up my brand new Helinox chair. It's the Helinox Zero. Costs around 200 bucks. I picked it up at Atmosphere in North Bay on my way up. And uh, it's my first time sitting in it. Oh, it's very low. Huh. It's pretty comfortable. I like it. Well, I'm going to sit here and uh, enjoy this view and just rest my body as much as possible uh, before tomorrow morning and then just get out her again. And hopefully, if somebody does come through the portage, they have some understanding and uh, they won't get too upset with me having my tent here. That's about all I can do. Anyways, that's it for now. I'm going to go. My arm's tired holding the phone. <laughs> Well, hello. It's 10 to 5. Um, I'm committed. <laughs> Set up the tent. Uh, I didn't put the vestibule on the back. I just kind of put it up on a tree stump there. There's like a, there's a tree stump behind the, the tent. I moved it as far over as I could to get it off the portage. And I didn't put the front vestibule up. I'll do that just before I go to bed. Um, that way, if someone does come through, they do have enough room to get by. Um, and then uh, when, I, when it starts getting dark, then I'll, I'll do, I have the stake there and I'll just pull it out. I've got my, my shoes here. Uh, this is the situation. Um, so I got my needle and thread out. been carrying this needle and thread around in my backpack for like 20 years and I have never had to use it so it's kind of neat um, I have enlisted the assistance of a piece of bark uh, to use as a thimble because it's a little bit hard to get the needle through some of it it's really thick um, so I'm just putting this on top of my finger and then behind the needle so it'll give it so I can push it through here's my uh, handiwork on that um, I'm gonna go back now I've gone up and this way and then I'm gonna go back and down and do all that and then I'm also gonna take some of this and I'm gonna tie it here and then put like just a loop around that I can tie behind my heel just to make sure that it really does stay um, because I don't know you know I give these shoes quite a beating and if I'm in the river or something, I don't want them to fall off. So I want to make sure that they stay secure. So the first one is done and it's pretty secure. I got a ton of stitches on there. Put the string on there too, just to have it there. It doesn't look that pretty, but I don't really care. Attached it to the front here, goes around through the loop. Um, and then here, just to give it that extra little strength and uh, make sure they make it through the trip. This way I don't have to do them again. This is the one that was bothering me. This is how I noticed. I'm so happy. Yes, I screwed up. I didn't check my shoes properly before I put them on, um, but I am able to repair them out in the field, so it works out great. Nice wind coming through here. It's drying all my stuff. Uh, not that it was soaking wet, but it was sweaty, so it's nice to have everything dry and then I put it away before it uh, gets dark and damp. Alright, so I've decided on my OTG meals, mac and meat. Um, it is just in a freezer bag because I have already uh, used the package at some point. This is half of it. Look at how much there is. That's half. So um, three quarter cup of water, bring to a boil, pour, pour it in there and stir. Got my boiling water in there and um, didn't leak so that's good just gonna sit it here in my cup just to be double double careful and uh, set my timer I'm gonna finish my um, sewing job here and uh, 
it's starting to get cold, which is silly. All right, my timer just went off and I just finished my other sandal. It's looking pretty good. It's nice and strong. And uh, I made even more stitches on this one um, just to make sure. And this one was in worse shape. So I'm just gonna tie the little yellow string around it and then I'm gonna eat my food. It's ready. Here it is. Looks really good. I think I put just the right amount of water in there. And uh, for some reason I'm shivering, so I don't have any socks on, maybe that's why. I'm gonna put some more clothes on. 5.56 and I'm eating dinner already. That's pretty good. This is not like seven o'clock at night. There's my mac and meat. Mm. Well, it's a good thing I finished sewing both shoes because I lost the needle. I can't find it. Um, when I went to finish, I was just about to finish off the last stitch um, and the thread broke. And so I pulled the needle out and I tied the thread, but it's in my shoe. No. Probably, oh, no, I'm probably never going to find it, so, oh well. I'm just having a little dessert. I brought a peanut butter cup and, ooh, it's not very nice, and a chocolate covered Oreo, so I'm having that. And I also boiled some water and made myself a ginger tea. And my little cup here, help warm me up. Well, that ended up being actually pretty scenic. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm not going to have this amazing campsite with this beautiful sunset view. No, but I have a waterfall, my canoe, my tent, my new chair. Everything's in one shot because it's just a little tiny space. Well, I'm just up in the forest making my privy and I got a new trowel. Look at this. Isn't it cute? I'll show you how big it is. Like, is that my fingers there and um, it's very similar to the other one I had at Gibson River but it's got what did Steve say it was iodized aluminum or something like that and um, it doesn't hurt my hand the other one was like really like they're sharp eh? it's titanium and it's very very thin it doesn't weigh like anything so it's really sharp so I had to wrap a towel around it last time to use it, so now I do not need to. Because it's so thin and so sharp, it really digs well. Like you just kind of jam it into the ground and it just like almost cuts the dirt. And you can just cut like a nice hole and pull it up and then just kind of dig a little more and so light. I'm just walking around filming some videos. It's super pretty. I was just sitting there like a lump on the chair. I was so tired and I thought, you know what, I need to move around. And my legs actually feel better moving around. So I feel like I could do the rest of the portage now, <laughs> but it's a little late. <laughs> I just found this little, uh, I don't know what you call it, amalgamation of some hair, it looks like. It's very, very um, rough. It feels almost like steel wool and um, that's the size of it. I'm not sure what it is, but it was just sitting there like that. And there's some really cool trees here. Some really big trees. That's all I've seen. I've been looking for lady slippers. Maybe it's a little too early this year. You are never going to believe what I found. The needle. <laughs> I was just walking around and I stopped by where I was sitting earlier. And I'm looking, I'm looking, and first I saw one, I thought it was the needle, and it was a pie needle. And then I saw it right next to it. I was going to wait till it got dark and use my headlamp and see if it would shine, but I got it. Well, it's quarter after eight, and I am going in the tent. Um, I'm fine when I walk around and do stuff. My thermometer says it's seven now. It's not very cold. I don't have a lot on, though. I just have, like, 
a merino base layer and a tank top and my raincoat. Um, it's a little bit thicker than like a shell, but not much. Like I don't have the fleece lining in it, so um, it's not super warm. I have my Patagonia here. I have more clothes. But since I'm getting ready to go in the tent, I opted to just wait to crawl into my sleeping bag and warm up. Anyways, I am heading in there to do a few things and then I'm going to hit the hay. Good night. See you tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button. Also click the bell for notifications. If you'd like to get more information on the stuff I use on my trips, please check out my website at camperchristina.com. Thanks. Bye.